A few years ago, I was teaching To Kill a Mockingbird to a class full of seventh and eighth graders. We were talking about racism, past and present. We were talking about our own identities within that. When an eighth grader raised his hand and observed, he said, Ms. Leong, you are the only teacher of color in the whole school. And it kind of dawned on me. And then I pointed out, I was like, guys, you're right. And like, I'm only half. So we had half a teacher of color in the whole school, which was funny at the time, um, but actually it's not funny, especially when we realize that our school is not unique. There is an alarming lack of teachers of color across this country, and this is even more alarming when we think about who our students are. Let's look at the data. Over 80% of our teachers in American public schools are white, and meanwhile, the majority of our students are kids of color. That means the majority of our students do not see themselves reflected in their teachers. And it doesn't stop at race. Let's talk about gender. Almost 80% of our teachers are women. And meanwhile, of course, about half of our students are boys. And visibility of our transgender students is on the rise. And if we're going to talk about gender, let's talk about sexual orientation. It's hard to find data out there about how many LGBTQ teachers we have, because frankly, it's still complicated for queer teachers to be out at work. Meanwhile, there was a study that was released last spring that showed that the majority of our students now, ages 13 to 20, now identify as something, quote, other than 100% heterosexual. I find these gaps to be shocking. And not because I don't believe it. I see these numbers in action at every school I've ever taught at, at every school I've ever visited. What I find shocking is that this isn't headline news. I was very fortunate to become a TED-Ed innovative educator this year. And in that role, I was asked to think about what innovations are needed in our schools. And I kept coming back to these statistics. I kept coming back to these gaps. What I came up with is roll call. This is my TED-Ed innovation project. What I'm doing is photographing students and teachers from all over the world and asking them two questions. One, what do you have in common with your students or teachers? And two, does it matter that students and teachers have things in common? At first, I was worried that people would be hesitant to talk about such personal issues, but instead, I have been humbled and inspired as the responses have been coming in from all over the world. I photograph students and teachers from Seattle to New York City. Some of their stories are sad. Some of their stories are funny. All of their stories are surprising. And in their own way, all of them are very brave. Even in the smallest details. Let me show you what I mean. When you visit rollcallproject.com, you'll see two tabs, one for students and one for teachers. And you can read all of their responses to our two questions, and you can see their faces. At the top of their posts, you'll see a list of identities that participants have willingly shared in their own words. So you'll see here teacher Anthony Johnson, um, teacher of the year Anthony Johnson of North Carolina. He has chosen to share that he is African American, he's male, he's heterosexual, he is one of the, or he is the first in his family to graduate from college, and he is a fifth grade teacher. You'll notice that the student list of identities are a little more brief. I encourage them to be brief as my way to respect that perhaps their identities are still evolving. This is Milan. She has shared that she is a middle school student, she is Chinese and Caucasian, and she is female. In a lot of ways, roll call is still evolving too. When I first thought of this project, I had this very ambitious goal that roll call was going to figure out a way to close these gaps in our schools. I still hope that this project will contribute to progress, but it's become something, um, it's become something else as well. This project is truly a celebration of the way students and teachers are connecting despite these gaps. Roll Call's new mission is simply this. Roll Call is humanizing the gaps, separating students and teachers. The best way for me to demonstrate this to you is to introduce to you some of the students and teachers who have joined the Roll Call already. This is Lynn Olmos. 
Lynn was the first profile to be uh, published at rollcallproject.com, and she was the perfect teacher to launch this project. She looks like such a teacher, right? <laughs> she's white, she's heterosexual, she's female. But what we learned through Lynn's responses to our roll call questions is that Lynn is also a human being. In response to the question, what do you have in common with your students? Lynn replied, generational poverty. She explained that when she was the age that her students are now, that she experienced neglect and abuse. She says that because she empathizes with her students, she can understand when they arrive to school with a big attitude because it's really just armor to protect them against future hurt. She responded that, yes, it matters so, so much that students and teachers have things in common. She said that because she empathizes with her students, she can accept them better in all of their rough edges. I asked Lynn why she wanted to join the roll call and share so much of herself with us. She said she hopes that her story will help students see that they too can outlive and outlast their challenges. Teacher Marco Silva has similar goals for his students. Marcos is such an interesting contrast to Lynn. Marcos is what it looks like when our teachers do reflect the students that they lead. Marcos is Mexican-American. He was born and raised in the border town of McAllen, Texas, where he currently teaches. Marcos' parents were migrant workers. Marco says when he goes to parent-teacher conferences now and the conversation easily moves between Spanish and English, he says it feels like he's just hanging out with his mom's friends. Marcos is also the founder of the South Texas Ideas Festival. This festival has brought together leaders from the Rio Grande Valley to show students who live there that they can grow up to become leaders themselves. Marcos is a hero in his community precisely because he is of his community. Marcos is also part of the LGBTQ community. We went back and forth getting ready to publish his post on Roll Call about whether or not he was going to include that on the list of his identities at the top of his post. And ultimately, he decided, yes, let's do it. He said, that's what Roll Call is all about. It's about putting yourself out there. He pointed out that we categorize students all the time, that we should perhaps think about doing that to ourselves sometimes, too. I followed up with Marcos and asked him, how's this going since his post has been published? He said simply that his students appreciate it. The first student I want to introduce you to is Nikki. I first met Nikki when she was a seventh grader in my humanities class. And Nikki, Nikki is a force of nature. When I first met Nikki, she would come to class and she would have like this disastrous backpack that would end up all over the aisles of our classroom. She would come to class in like these amazing rainbow colored like circus outfits. Um, I also saw Nikki as a seventh grader stun entire auditoriums full of people, including middle school students, into absolute silence that turned into wild applause with her poetry. Nikki is still performing poetry. She's also a high school senior and she is a business owner. She's won awards with her hula hooping and also her planking. I was so, <laughs> Nikki's amazing. I was so uh, happy to see that her responses to Roll Call's two questions reflected how dynamic of a character Nikki is. She talked about all the different ways she relates to her different teachers. She said that her math teacher is also a vegetarian. She said that she can relate to me because I also have a lot of different projects going on outside of school. Nikki also mentioned that despite the fact that in her 12 years of being a student, she has never once had a Middle Eastern teacher, that she appreciates that she recently learned that some of her teachers share her view about the travel ban, even though they do not share her Iranian culture. Nikki ended her post by saying she sees her teachers as role models, despite the fact that there's not much cultural overlap there. The next student is Dante. I also met Dante as a seventh grader in class. Dante's also a senior this year. Dante's getting ready for college. He's also uh, interning at a youth center at the same time. I want, to, um, I want to read Dante's full responses from Roll Call right now. And while I do that, I want to leave on screen 
a quote from one of his first responses. Question number one. What do you have in common with your teachers? My teachers and I definitely do not have a lot in common. The only thing really connecting us is that it's their job to teach me, and I have to go to their class. In my opinion, the biggest divider between me and my teachers are race, gender, and the economic background. Does it matter that students and teachers have things in common? Yes, it definitely does make a difference in the relationships that I have with staff at my school. For example, I don't see any of my teachers or staff members as people that I could truly open up to. Honestly, how could they understand me? They are all white women, and I'm a black male. In my perspective, I have grown up in a different world than my teachers. It's a world that they've never had to experience, and they never will. The only teachers or adults that would truly ever understand me and my past experiences would be a person of color, but I don't think I've ever had a teacher of color, and that's really a shame. Dante's responses to roll call's questions are more powerful than any statistic will ever be. I called Dante and his mom earlier this week to get their blessing for me to share Dante's responses on stage today. And I realized that this project is not only reconnecting me to former students, it's also reconnecting me to their families. My hope is that Roll Call becomes an opportunity for families and community members to join in the conversation with students and with teachers about what's going on in our schools. The last student I'd like to introduce to you is Ryan. Ryan is one of my most energetic sixth graders. Sometimes he has to take like a little lap around the locker bay before he comes back to class, which is why I was especially charmed by Ryan's thoughtful responses to Roll Call's questions. Ryan didn't write about race or gender or sexual orientation. Ryan wrote about his favorite teacher, Ms. Hogan. So, Ms. Hogan, if you're out there somewhere, this one is for you. When Ryan was in elementary school, kids made fun of his last name. He said they thought it was a very stupid name. Ryan later found out that Ms. Hogan had a similar experience, that kids made fun of her last name, too. Ryan also mentioned that Ms. Hogan also loves pizza, and that apparently Miss Hogan's friends, just like Ryan's friends, also prefer running around and playing instead of video games. Ryan also mentioned that Miss Hogan's family also immigrated to the United States. This project started out as a critique of our education system, but it has become so much more than criticism. Yes, students deserve to see themselves in their teachers. But students also deserve to know how hard their teachers are working to connect with them despite the divides in our schools today. I had this vision of roll call being this place where students could read the responses from their students, they could look at the pictures of their teachers, and um, they could see kind of behind, behind the scenes. We could pull back the curtain on how much effort teachers are putting in to figuring out ways to reach out to their students, and students could see how much their teachers care about them. What I didn't anticipate was how powerful it would be to hear from the students, and that through two simple questions, we could see that the students are reaching right back out to all of us. Thank you. I'm Kristen Leong. I hope that all of you will also join the roll call and be present and be counted. Thank you very much.